Welcome to Loosecast, the 23-24 season review. It's in the books. We're going to basically focus on Newcastle United with some brief, brief interludes from Middlesbrough, from Dean and Felix Leiter to my right. Dean Saunders, Borough fan, to my left, and Hepburn, Newcastle fan, and in seat four today, Round Cooley. Cooley. <laughs> Round Cooley. <laughs> Newcastle fan, stand up comedian, in the past nighttime f- rep. Would you Rep, think? I was like a manager, but this is a long time ago now. <laughs> I think it shows how long ago we've seen each other that you've gone for that. Like, yes, I used to manage Tiger Tiger in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think Tiger Tiger exists anymore. My nightlife career is very much more formed around stand-up comedy and commentating about all matters Newcastle United. But yeah, related. more importantly for this podcast, host of the Newcastle BBC Radio Newcastle United Total Sport Podcast. Yeah, I mean, you got that all in the wrong order. <laughs> <laughs> I could not have got that in the wrong order. Very long title. Title. Very title. Very long title. Uh, the BBC Newcastle Total Sport NUFC pod, but yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like a wordle that was. It's just <laughs> like that. They don't quite go there. So we'll get into the highs and the lows. Oh, we've also, I was going to say, we've also got the face of Newcastle United. I mean, Ants on every single match day, isn't he? Hey, you're not fucking... Every single match day you score. So, Uraldo's actual Sky Sports hits where he talks to the camera about it. However, explain why you appear on Sky Sports on the reg... It's raw sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> or someone sitting next to you. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are in prime spot for some focusing... Like, yeah, we are very, very front row the Milburn. So right. the cameras are in front of us. It's mainly the TNT games. The TNT cameras always in front of us, so... When there's a goal, the walls turn around and you just see my 16 chins just wobbling about the place as I'm... I literally get like four WhatsApps a match. Yeah. <laughs> That's on TV again. <laughs> so we'll get to, um, we'll get to some, right at the end, we're going to touch on some Euro previews from yourself. We're going to get to the highs and lows of the seasons, everything else. Um, but let's just, let's just try and do a really quick, and this is going to be tough for you. Really quick recap. Think of like a sentence or so. We'll start with Borough. Give us a sentence to highlight the 23-24 season as a Borough fan. You are going to say the same as me, but injuries. Injuries ruined our season. That's what happened with Borough. Like li- literally all our best players got injured. And that is the only reason we are not in the Premier League right now about to prepare for a season where we finish above Newcastle. That's my excuse. Don't be so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and just give us a give us a give us a sentence. You kind of up uh, like a kind of sum up. Just highs and lows, mate. Isn't it? Yeah, highs and lows. Obviously, the highs of the Champions League, the lows of like, the injuries, and just typical Newcastle. Just like dropping points and games where you should be picking up all the points. I think that's been a typical Newcastle thing for years and years, though. But. But yeah, it's unbelievable having Champions League football back in Newcastle. You got anything I'm different sorry. to add? No, I'd say pretty much the same. Frustrating but hopeful, yeah. which I think just zones in on those highs and lows. Yeah. It's been frustrating in the short run, but I think, you know, four years ago, if we'd finished seventh, we would have been absolutely buzzing. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, so with Borough, we've got like a, a typical Borough crack where we will literally beat the top of the league team away from home, which actually happened this season. Like we beat Leicester away from home. The week after, I'm sure we drew someone near the bottom. Like that's typical yeah. Borough, beat the better teams. Lose against the bottom ones. Yeah, you, you beat, didn't you? You beat Leicester. We did the did double you, over Leicester. And then did you get beat off like Press North End or something the week Plymouth, after? Plymouth, Plymouth, I think, I think it was. was it? Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous, but yeah, is that like a typical Newcastle That's thing? That's well, exactly, you know what I mean? We're stunk PSG 4 1, would be Man United, would be Chelsea, would be Man City, and then we're like lost to Luton. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we took one point from Luton, I think one point from Everton. So again, it was just those games where it didn't really feel too important and it yeah. felt like we were going to run over them, where that's where the struggles sort of came in. Like preparation goes like in all the big games of like this is what we think we can do to like combat the, the style that they play and then we'll play like Fulham and we'll just be like yeah <laughs> fuck like, <knows."> not today <laughs> <laughs> what's happening like <laughs> almost not respecting like the lesser yeah, down the yeah, table yeah, opposition yeah. so you've already mentioned it but as a, as a long time Newcastle fan you mentioned it a lot in your stand up and, and stuff what was the best moment of this season for me, it's got to be PSG 4-1. I just think that probably tops Barca 3-2. It tops 5-1 Sunderland, and I was sat in the Gallagher for that game. But I just think everything leading up to it, the, the drone display, all the kids coming out and seeing that Champions League football coming back, everyone sort of counting us out. And then it, that's one of the top three teams in the world. You know what I mean? Kylian Mbappe, every kid who follows football knows his name. And to run over them 4-1 and have people like Dan Byrne score. <laughs> I just like that iconic Angel of the North celebration he did. That's still my cover photo. I just don't think, even the 8-0 against Sheffield, I don't think much will ever top that in my life. 
Anything different from you? No, the PSG one's definitely up there. The Tottenham game as well, obviously a couple of weeks back was decent. Chelsea game as well, when we done the podcast afterwards and I was... Uh, I may as well put it as I was absolutely fucked. You were hearing, you were, <laughs> was fucked. You were hearing was body, fucked. hearing yeah, body yeah. away with spirit. Yeah, like the Jess fucking, Beers one. Yeah. And I knew I was, you were getting fucked. So I got fucked in, in a, I don't know what the word is, but I got, <laughs> solidarity, that's the one. <laughs> I got fucked in solidarity with you. What, what would be your, is there a high point of the Borough season? What is your favourite moment of the season? When it finished. Fi- <laughs> 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 to be fair, to be, to be fair, not as, no any of the level of views, but, Beating Sunderland 4-0 away from home. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Love it. Can, I, can, can I just quickly as well, because there were a few moments as well, I think, with over Sheffield 8-0. That's off yeah. that, isn't it? Beating Sunderland 3-0, just having the derby back and getting that final bit of revenge. And I think genuinely our season was saved by the 4-3 against West Ham. Yeah. Coming from 3-0, 3-1 down or whatever yeah. it was yeah, to win yeah. 4-3, that was a really exciting game to watch. So, honourable mention for, have you seen on Twitter, you know, obviously when you beat Sheffield United 8-0, I love when someone starts scoring that many goals and then that 9-0 Southampton Twitter account starts playing. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Man. As soon as I see some goals going on, I'm straight at Twitter, mate. I love them. So, favourite goal you've seen live this season? So, favourite goal you've seen live Ooh. in, you know, hopefully it's for Borough. But yeah, you know. well, yeah, I mean, so we got the League Cup semi-final. Didn't we? And we beat Chelsea one nil in the first leg at home, and I think that was that was epic. That wasn't it. So we beat them one nil again. I say this as if it's like absolutely amazing. Back in the day, and that's how old I am now. Back in the day, like when we were we were playing European football, like we got the UEFA Cup final back in the day. So I'm used to what we used to be, but nowadays, obviously, we're not that level. So I think beating Chelsea one nil at home, Hayden Who Hattney, scored that goal? Hayden Hattney. Right, scored it, scored, and it was a uh, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. We had such high hopes for the second leg, but I know what questions you're going to ask. So I'll leave the second leg for that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned Dan Burn, but have you got a more favourite goal? I mean, that first goal by Miggy against PSG was pretty good. But I think for me, my favourite goal that I saw live in the stadium was, um, I think it was Anthony Gordon against Arsenal. Just because I genuinely, from where I was sat, and I was sat right by the byline, it did look like it was very much out to me. And I was like, yeah. there's no way they're going to give that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they gave it, and we've still yeah. not heard the end of it. It's been like 190 days and counting Arsenal. <laughs> and still like, we're not going to leave, but the man's ruined it. Well, ever since yesterday, I've seen it pop up on Twitter. Twitter about yeah, yeah, times all the time, there. mate. It's Newcastle Lads. fans as well going, so do what everyone thinks this was out there again. <laughs> Staring the pot. <laughs> Your favourite goal? It's got to be the Fabian Shaw one against PSG. Oh, that final one, yeah. yeah that or uh, was it Isaac against West Ham with the hands on the hips? No, it was Villa. Was, Villa? was that this no. season? Or was that no? Was this season? season? I thought it was West Ham because I thought you'd lob Fabianski when he sort of lobbed the keeper. Yeah, and then and then like they both the stood there looking. I swear, maybe it was West Ham, but was that it's this been season? a long fucking season? Might have been, yeah, might have been the start yeah. of the season. There's, there's something you two want to agree with me, but there's something that deep within me that would like to see Borough in the Champions League, just because I'd like to see, you know, those like parades that were going through the town, like, you know, like, <laughs> like I'd love to see that in Borough, you know what I mean? With all, <laughs> like, like the Prisians going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> It'll be a repeat of me when me and you drop lovely Laura off, and you're like, did you see the parade, Dean? I got lost. <laughs> I only know how I get to the stadium. Did you, were you like, were either of you like amongst that? Were either you like in the Yeah, I was or, like, yeah. I've got some videos. I was dead centre of it all. Like, I went to, because I, I did a gig at Gates at FC the day before, and the chairman was there and he told us that technically Newcastle's Champions League campaign kicks off at Gateshead Stadium because they were having the under-21 game before <laughs> yeah. the actual game. So I went and I watched the under-21 game and then I got the, um, walked over into town and like just kind of accidentally walked into it and it was quite... Which like, one was this? The- this was PSG, PSG, so it was like quite a lot of argy-bargy, like the the French fans, they're weird, like they're sort of the, their away fans are like ultras, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, they're sort 100%. of pretend hooligans, but... They're not really hooligans, you know what I mean? They're all just in balaclava. It's kind of weird because they merge like what we have in like the casual culture, but with like a rude boy culture as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you got all these like kids in like ballys and stuff like that who look like they should be in a grime video, but they're singing like PSG songs and they've got their drum and then like some tune fans were throwing sausage rolls at them. <laughs> It was hilarious, you know what I mean? But I was right in the middle of it all. It was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, but it was... Steak baked. Steak baked. (laughs) That's just embarrassing, isn't it? (laughs) And then you get stonked 4-1 as well. It wasn't a good day out for them. It wasn't a good day out at all. Did they get kept in the stadium quite a while? I can imagine they would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and do we, do we ever close to any of those parades? Were we ever like in town when they they were going on? Well, we always meet at uh, Point Blank before we go to the match, almost. So like they kind of walked up Gallagher. 
Yeah. So he just kind of uh, popped me head out and went, Laddying for fucking me that and then just drank up here. <laughs> a couple of the other lads kind of got involved in it. And have you got a memory of it? Like, do Sunderland, do, do, would Sunderland fans get brought through? I know it's not the same, but would Sunderland fans get brought through by like the police and everything like to oh. the Riverside? Or you'd never have seen it because you never like live like particularly locally. Because I never get there on time. <laughs> <laughs> by, by the second half. It's <laughs> be two nil down, I may as well just gone for it. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, I've seen a few fights over the years because we used to like, get there a bit earlier because I lived in Chastity Street so it was still like it was still 45 minutes to get there so we'd go across a bit earlier go to like Pizza Hut or something and there'd be like this little walkway bit where they were I've seen a few scraps just your standard uh, hooligan day out you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> hey, Pizza Hut uh, Pizza Hut <laughs> <coffee. laughs> I mean, I mean you can eat salad <laughs> I mean if anyone pays attention to this podcast who actually knows about Borough I probably got this so wrong, but I'm sure our, our one's called the Borough Frontline, which I, I like that. We, we've got the worst name for hooligan firms ever. Right, what's it's yours? like the Gremlins, Gremlins and the Bender Crew, and I'm like, neither of those sound particularly <laughs> scary. So, so the, uh, Carl was the BCF, the Border City Firm, and it was uh, it used to be really quite famous because there was a guy called Paul Dodd, and he was the first guy who used to be like kind of quite high up in the BCF. And he was, he, um, so if anyone knows where Carl is, it's just quite near the Scottish border. And it was uh, goes back to the time in England. Scotland used to play at Wembley before, like, and basically Paul Dodd and the BCF lot got about four miles down the M6. Uh, they stopped for a wee and he stabbed a Scotland fan. Um, so he, he's, he was pretty. He went to prison. Uh, and yeah, that took a twist. <laughs> no, 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 they were really quite well known. Like the back back in the sort of like late nineties. Any um, great memories about football? <laughs> but what, what, what the story was such a like jovial tone though, what, like a big smile. With it. Then he stabbed what, a Scotland fan. One, yeah. of the, one of the really interesting things about it all though is he, he writes in his book about because basically it was like the sort of late eighties, early nineties, and he basically goes to prison. And then a lot of the guys in the BCF basically just discover acid house and discover like <laughs> and discover ecstasy and all that kind of stuff and he comes out going like right what we up to boys and they're all just like tops off <laughs> in, in a club like in Carlisle just like in Annabelle's going oh we're into fucking this now um, but yeah so it took a turn but yeah it, it did take them Known Felix, I thought he was going to go so if anyone knows him and get him on this pod put it in yeah. the comments there I think he sadly <laughs> passed away well, you're not going to get him on the pod, then, are you? But I was going to say... One for your homie. <laughs> and it just obviously quickly turned to... Where I, I read his autobiography. Time. It was about 70 pages long, but... Uh, you reckon that could be, like, the solution to most of the world's conflicts? If you just had, like, the UN airdrop a bunch of pingers <laughs> over the war zone? <laughs> Everyone just gets smashed it's on a, Mandy. It's a streets lyric, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Imagine Is the it? world's leaders on pills. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, player of the season. Let's come to Dean first. Who's the standout... Non-injured Borough player of the season. <laughs> oh, non-injured was screwed. <laughs> Honestly, just... Oh, your favourite, your favourite player. For, for the other 10 Borough fans out there, right, like, you don't understand how many of our players have actually been injured. We've been so unlucky. Our best how many? Because we've had, like, what, 22 injuries this season, I think? At one point, we had 14 first team yeah, players out. The really quick version, I'm going to rattle through this as quick as possible. Our main goalkeeper was out for ages. Our main right back out for the season. Both left backs were injured for ages. Our captain, who was a centre half, out for the season. The other three centre halves have been out for half the season. Centre midfielders have all been out. Like every position would have been the quicker yeah. way to say. Honestly, we've been really, really unlucky. So, I mean, Lattie Lath, have you seen any of his highlights on us? Yeah. Good because he's he's the next one where it's like if people get catch wind of him he, he could he go because he's, 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 he's he was your favourite player oh, he's, this season. he's just carnage he's just one of them players where he's just that fast like something's gonna happen do you remember Adama Traore yeah, yeah. He, play, he plays for Fulham now doesn't he yeah when he was in Borough he was my favourite player ever because he could just get the ball run down the wing, skin six players, then cross it out for a goal kick and it's just so exciting because you don't know what he's gonna do <laughs> like it lasts probably a better version technically he does look very very yeah, good I'm going to say a lot of your laugh nice uh, Anth come with you then favourite player to watch just your favourite who you've enjoyed the most this season I think Gordon's probably been the standout one for me because I think listen he, he always looked good even when he was at Everton he looked I'll good i tell you where he didn't look but good like, one Tuesday I was walking through the Metro Centre he generally just looked like a council like house lad like walking yeah. through with his missus in a pram and now like, even the size of him I was like you kidding he's like he's one of the better players at Newcastle United it was insane yeah. but I've enjoyed watching him but he did not look like top level Premier League football yeah. walking yeah. to the Metro Centre on a Tuesday afternoon sorry you're jumping for two seconds did you see that thing yesterday on Twitter that uh with the, the, the hospital yeah. with the kid that's, yeah. mate, that's, that, that's amazing that like fair yeah. play to him for that but yeah, I think Gordon's there. I think Shaw's been outstanding as well for what we've needed he's been solid the entire season but to be fair 
the squad as a whole, I don't think there's anybody. I know people have been giving like long stuff loads of shit, but like I, I fucking love Sean Long stuff. Like, I absolutely love him. And I know his performance haven't been the best, but like he's the perfect person to have in that Newcastle But squad. I think people are really harsh on him because people forget he's been playing with a broken foot the entire season yeah. and he's been putting the team ahead of himself. And like once he gets that foot fixed, there's every chance he could get back to the performances oh, of last season. Like but I do yeah, think yeah, we're in a bit of a toxic fan base when it comes to when our own don't yeah. play up to standard. Yeah. I feel like as part of us we're all going, oh, that could have been me if it wasn't for the injury. And we're so harsh on the likes of Longstaff and Byrne compared to other players. It was the same with Perez. Right. When Perez was at a tune, he was one who was just like an absolute scapegoat of like, yeah. we hate him. And then he would like, Get the top like leading goal scorer in the championship, and they're like, still shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fucking give the kid a break, like. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think Gordon's Gordon's got to be the one. Have you got any local players playing first team football? Yeah, Hayden Hackney, the oh, one I mentioned who scored against Chelsea. He's local. Uh, I think possibly that's the or Dale Fry centre half. But obviously, we've had some good ones, Stuart Down and David Wheater. Want to get both of them on the pod? That's uh, a <laughs> sad look. The Borough Youth Systems, like, we've had some good ones. the Beth Youth System in. The Northeast, so yeah, our Boris is good. Because like, even, even probably like, the reason they didn't keep me on, they, they know <laughs> what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Favorite player to watch this season? Uh, yeah, it has to be Anthony Gordon. I just think like he's been injured what two games, and he's got something like twenty-two goals and assists. And I think there was yeah. so much reticence when we first did sign him. We were just thinking like, oh, is he really up to scratch? Is he a bit of an Eddie Howe player? And I think he's proved it and far beyond. Well, let's go. Let's take a slight tangent then. Does he go to the Euros? If he goes, 100%. absolutely. If he doesn't, I think Gareth Southgate. Well, he's, words he's not travelled to Australia with the squad the day. And apparently, the rumour mill is that Southgate asked how not to take him because he wants him for the Euros. Right? Okay. Are you mental? Not who? Yeah. And if he, but the thing is, he's, he's all round. He's just mm. perfectly all round. Literally anywhere in that front line, he'll play. So that's my, that was my next question. If he goes, how do you think? How do you think he's used? Is he used as a bit of a super sub, or is he has he got like a, a position that you think he'd, he'd he'd start? Who who would start usually? Assuming like Gordon hasn't got so, who would usually start for us? Is he like front three? Saka, Foden, Be- Bellingham, Bellingham, Kane, yeah. Nah, well, Bellingham and Rice would probably be the two centers. centers. Um, I would personally, but then I think I'm just biased because I'm a Newcastle fan, so I think he has made more contributions in Saka, but I don't know yeah. if he actually has or not. I don't know those statistics to hand. Who, who did you say the three would be? I, I mean, I, I, obviously, Kane's going to start up top, and then you're going to have Ford, and you're going to have and then Cole Palmer Saka. Starts after Palmer's got to be there. A lot of pens. And I think a lot that, of I, pens. I think yeah, it all depends if he takes Conor Gallagher with him as well, because I think if he takes Conor Gallagher, he might use... Bellingham was more of like a false nine or that's yeah. like ten, you know what I mean? which is where he's played for Madrid, doesn't it? He yeah, yeah that's why I'd like to see. Him. Mate, you can put Jude Bellingham in goal, mate. It's <laughs> fucking unbelievable. Like. He's unbelievable. Well, he's got a good starting position, and he's, like, he's <laughs> have you heard about the agreement him and his like his parents made about the two boys? Yeah, it was that like his mum moved to Real Madrid, then, yeah, uh, to Madrid, his dad and his dad had to move to, to, move to Sunderland. <laughs> have you seen his, his brothers linked with uh, Dortmund though? Like, again, it could just be Lord of Shy, but he's, he's he didn't not, look great when they played us. On his brother, like he's not a patch. On his brother. What's Sorry. been the toughest moment? Like, what's been the toughest time you've walked away from a game? But well, what's been the worst? The whistle's gone, and you've felt the worst this season. Well, I'll, it was it kind of was what I was going to before, but it wasn't even the full time whistle. It was the half time whistle. <laughs> it was uh, we be, we beat Chelsea in that League Cup semi final one nil, and I was absolutely buzzing. I was like, oh my god, we're going to get in it, and it was exactly twenty years. No. Yeah, it was exactly 20 years after we won the League Cup as well. So leap year again. It was like, oh my God, it's poetic. We're going to get the final of the League Cup. We're going to do it. And we beat Chelsea 1-0. I was absolutely buzzing. And I think it was like two two and a bit weeks out of wait for that second leg. And I was, honestly, I was proper excited. Like, regardless of what was going on with work or whatever, I'm like, I'm absolutely buzzing for that game. Like, we're 1-0 up. We've just got to hold on, hold on till half time, hold on till the 80th minute and we can do it. It was 4-0 at half time. <laughs> so, You're just watching it at home? I, I, I did and I'm so cool. glad I did. But yeah, we got to be 6-1 in the end and like, honestly, 1-0 off the first leg. Can we do it? 6-2 full time. Nice. Uh, worst, just worst feeling this season. There's three that immediately spring to mind. Okay. Uh, last Wednesday against Man United, just because I felt like we really should have had a pen there, and I think it was clear as day. After Everton, because I fucking hate Everton, so to not get a win against them, and because Paul Dummett came on for like a minute and forgot he wasn't playing rugby. <laughs> was a very frustrating deal all in all, but I think for me, it's the start of my birthday weekend. It was such a good weekend as well, but PSG away. 
because mm. it was yeah. just daylight robbery. They never should have had a pen. Off it, Not in a million it. years. Crazy. I think we would have been in Champions League or Europa if it wasn't for that. I think Champions League was ours to lose at that point and we probably might have, just might have got a result of a real Sociedad. Um, so that, that for me was the, yeah. that was the most painful. Same. Uh, it wasn't at home, but the Brighton game at the start of the season, because we just oh, looked yeah. absolutely fucking dog shit. Yeah. Like, we looked awful, and they just, the played were off the pitch, like, so I think that was, that's more of like a frustrating one, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it got that stage where it just, it was like 75 minutes, and I was just like, I just don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah. So I take that off, like, I, fuck it, I'm not watching it anymore. I, I love that one, because you remember, it was at Oosburn Gardens, wasn't it? And, well, yeah. not the match it was, was a moment, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was a weird, it, the, 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 the stadium was closed. Oosburn Gardens. <laughs> well, look, we had a, we had a pop-up party at Oosburn Gardens with Dizzy Rascal, and the, the venue had agreed to do it, but then, the match was on so it was sort of like well there was a queue outside waiting to get in they're like well we can't kick people out while the match is on so every time Brighton scored I was like more people are leaving this is yeah. getting easier, this is getting easier. <laughs> so, and then it was like six minutes stoppage time or something wasn't it it's yeah. like for fuck's sake just get out but yeah that would have been a headache if he's won that because they wouldn't have been leaving and we would have a Definitely right not. nightmare Definitely on our hands yeah. did, has anyone made it 20 away games this season have you made it 20 away Probably. games uh, I went to Milan away did you? Uh, that was crazy nice. actually because I'd already booked a show. I did a history show at the stand about the Northeast. It's like, I do a podcast called Time Travel. It's all about history of the Northeast. So it's me, Mike Milligan, the author of the Northumbrian, Stan Jackson. And we'd already sold all the tickets. It was looking pretty good. But then I got like a last minute ticket to Milan. There was no way I could have got to Milan. It was like the next day. So I finished Newcastle at about 10.30 p.m. Got on an overnight megabus to London. Got to Gatwick. Flew to Milan, dropped me bags off at my hotel, ran to the stadium, pretty much just made it the top of the San Siro for the Champions League no music way. playing. Uh, and that was, it was a, wasn't the best game, nil nil, but to be in the San Siro in the blistering heat, all the mags, that was, I just walking around Milan with mags and hearing mags being like, oh, well, Milan's not as nice as, you know, spending more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was just such a great cultural insight. That was uh, one of the best couple of days of my life. I went to Lake Como the day after and then came back and um, they were running like an open mic in my hostel. And I was like, oh, can I, can I jump on? And they were like, oh, um, how long do you think you can do us that? I reckon probably do 10 minutes. They were like, oh, that seems a bit much, that, mate. I think I'll give you five. Have you done many gigs before? And then I do that awkward thing where I just reeled off my entire TV. <laughs> Smashed the gig in the end, yeah. Yes. Because well, that, that was the first game right of the Champions League yes, stages yes, yeah, Milan yeah, yeah. away the very was first, first game. one um, it was that, Milan away then PSG at home which also went to and then I think it was was it Dortmund, Dortmund home away. oh yeah it was two home games in a row wasn't yeah, it yeah and then I did Dortmund away as well that was good fun but Dortmund's shite what as a as a as a place? As a the fuck all there, mate. Movie, like honestly, it's like the Bible Belt. Like we got there on the Sunday, and like all the bars were closing at like nine pm. You couldn't get a drink to save your life. So what, what are we saying? Dortmund, Milan, Spennymoor. Still, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> Dortmund, Milan, Spennymoor. That's how I'd rank them. Um, like, but in Dortmund, like the most famous thing they have is like a disused coal mine. I was just like, this is awful. Even after the match, they closed all the bars at 11. Because people do talk about like ger- like German football being incredible. Like it's cheap to go to, it's cheap to get to the games, like the ticket prices are good. Like, but do you not, it's not the experience you Well, had in- people with sense, people who knew what they were doing, people who'd really made a good plan, they stayed in either Dortmund, eh, not Dortmund, Dusseldorf or Cologne. Right. And mm. then got the train. There's a bit more of a party going on in Dusseldorf or in Cologne. And Berlin, like if you've ever been, you're yeah. a DJ, you know what the parties are like there. Like it's insane. The experience is crazy. But Dortmund itself, I was shocked for how big a footballing brand they are. How little there was to do would with you, the Would you put it on a par with Stockton? Sorry? Would you put it on a par with Stockton? I'd say Stockton's got more offer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's saying something, do you know what I mean? Again, I don't even know Middlesbrough. I'm a, I'm the biggest <laughs> Borough fan ever, but I'm not from Middlesbrough, so I don't actually know. But when, when you played Dortmund at home, a lot of the German supporters came out after. There was a lot of them. Yeah. Came, we had Bohemia on it that night, I think, and like a lot of them came down. Did, did any of the PSG? Fans come out any of the Paris fans or not? Or the Dortmund fans no, no, no. seem like ordinary fans. There's but a lot of the PSG fans seem like there was some sort of ultra hooligan aspect was, to them. I, I, I was, was going to say, I didn't hear... I was mortal in the spice of Punjab trying to talk to two <laughs> PSG fans like, after the game. <laughs> what a part And it just, it didn't go very well. Like. Yeah, but, but that's what I mean. I didn't hear of any bother or anything after the PSG game. So no, no, no. I do French remember on the way fans. down, like I remember seeing a video of like a Jordi and a Dortmund fan hitting each other okay. uh, just briefly. But I think Dortmund fans were by and large just fat yeah. old men who oh. like a beer and a sausage and just <laughs> yeah. wanted to have a good time. They were like most ordinary football fans. Fair, fair. 
What um, I want to I go slightly off um, season review now and just onto another bone of contention and, and you'll have all have your memories of it from this season. But there is a lot of chat about VAR at the moment, about it being reviewed and everything else. Positive, negative, keep it, get rid of it. What's your thoughts? Well, as someone who's not obviously had it, you know, being in the championship, um, I, I hate it. Like, obviously, I, we've had it for a couple of games. I mean, do you remember last year we... Was it last year? No, it was bloody two years ago, I think, when we beat Man United on penalties. Do you remember the goal it, it, where the cross to the back post and Duncan Watmore basically like basketballed oh, yeah, it yeah, down yeah. and then put, put, it went across to Crooks? But the rule is, if the goal doesn't come directly from the person who's handballed it, it counts. Yeah. So I remember, and there's that famous clip with Mark Goldbridge where he's going, why is he celebrating the idiot? They're not in the championship. It's, they've got VR. They've given it. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but I didn't celebrate because for the life of me, I was like, well, he's obviously handballed it. Like, even I was like, why is he celebrating? It took away the fun. Whereas I think, you know, if it was like in the championship and he scored and he's like, he's just handballed and then you'd be going nuts. So like, from what little experience I've had of it from a Middlesbrough point of view, I hate it. I, I think get rid. But there's been games where we got shafted. We got beat by Leeds the other week and their goal was a mile offside. And like, I hate saying this because you get people who go, what's But, but fuck Danny Bond. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Danny. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he made me watch Baby Randy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like it hurts, it kills you, but it just it's, it takes away that moment, doesn't it? So yeah, VAR. Did you not like Baby Randy? I did like Baby Randy. Yeah. Like, yeah. He just lured me in. I thought it was all nice and I was like, oh, this is fun. And then, <laughs> then so the comedy, mate. It's a comedy. <laughs> also, Danny sold it as at first. <laughs> it was hilarious in certain points, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I've never done it up the chapter before. <laughs> so, sorry, we're going so off topic. Yeah, going sorry. The theme. Yeah. sorry, but did you watch her on Piers Morgan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it like, was... I was so disappointed. I mean, I don't want to discredit her because she's our next guest on the next episode <laughs> you got her appearing um, at a club night have you <laughs> 10 pound in free vodka shot and get your photo done <laughs> baby reindeer yeah. see if she hangs but, up your curtains <laughs> but I was so disappointed when I watched it because I was like I was I was hoping to watch it and she was going to come out with like oh yeah well I did do that but that's a lie no no I did do that but that one was like but she just denied everything really yeah. didn't yeah, she's she? clearly like very guilty and very mentally unstable and yeah. I thought it was like horrendously irresponsible did you hear journalism much, did from you, Piers Morgan. Did you hear how much Piers Morgan paid her? No, how much did he pay? Quid, £250. Did you see his tweet? <sighs> Which one? She'd done like a thing, there's like a quote in the paper saying like, oh, need to get like a better quote, I should have got this and he replied going, no, you just need to get a better manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, VAR. Uh, have, have, you got a, have you got a moment that sticks out? Like a St. James's moment that sticks in your, in your craw or are you, are you far against? I, I, I don't think it matters. I mean, it depends what you want from football. I can't remember which player said it, but somebody said like a lot of the iconic moments would be taken away from football if VR existed. Yeah. You never have like the hand of God and so on and so forth. And there is a entertainment and arty romantic part of football, as wanky as that may sound, where kind of these odd decisions. But I just don't think it matters until you have a discussion around the people implementing these systems. Whether the VAR is there or it's not there, the English League is notoriously bad when it comes to refereeing, when it comes to officiating. I don't know why that is. Uh, in Fergie's autobiography, he said it was because, uh, even though he's very left-wing, they're very well unionised, but it's incompetent mates looking after incompetent mates who you can't hold to account. And throughout my entire life, I've felt that's the case. And I still feel it's the case. And I feel like whether you have VAR next season or you don't, it's not going to make a shred of difference until we talk about the people who are implementing these decisions and start making them accountable. And the more accountable they are, the less abuse they'll probably get. Yeah, 100%. Do you think there's even a tiny chance that they actually will, Scott? Because they're doing this vote. Surely there's not a, a chance that they'll get rid of it. I think the, the only team that'll be dead against... Well, sorry, completely with getting rid of it will be Nottingham Forest. I can't see... Yeah, I think we've got to go full Forest. I think like we've just got to just yeah. launch a war with well, the refs. You know what I mean? Was It was Wolves who, who launched the idea for it, wasn't it? Did I read? Did I, I read think that so. Correctly? They had a couple of... They've had, some, as well, they've had but, a horrendous yeah. season when it comes to... They've had yeah. so many decisions so, go do, against them. They'd be a lot higher in the league if it wasn't for bad VR decisions. Yeah. So do you think it's sort of a combination of that is just how bad they are at using it? If, if it can be quicker and more automated... Because for me, it's like the... The Coventry Man United moment in the FA Cup. Like That's, that was it's outrageous. Like, yeah. And it does look like it sort of is biased towards bigger teams. And you know there is this aspect of again, like there is sports, but there's also entertainment and business wise, Man United, Man City, Chelsea have a lot more yeah. fans in Asia where there's a population of three billion. And let's be honest, from a money side, they matter more than any of us do here in a country of seventy million. Yeah. yeah. So I do think it does look like it's sort of biased so, towards them and Wolves and Nottingham Forest are, are correct I, to be I, don't, I think that's my biggest issue with it is if 
you've got it in the decisions are favourable again like for the bigger teams but at the same time we talked about the Arsenal one before again so mm-hmm. if I if that was on the other foot I would be absolutely fucking appalled that it, but that's, that we didn't get that decision uh, but that's I mean that's what VAR is like, I mean it's there for the reason but I don't feel like they've they've done enough to make it work like it's there's still yeah. some dickhead sat in an office going and meh, 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 meh. like there was one the other week I can't remember which game it was but they're like oh yeah he's 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 going to be offside they do it he's onside and then they went oh we'll just go back fucking 45 seconds to see if that was a foul on somebody yeah. like next to the by line and you're like just fucking get on with it, man. And did you yeah. hear like, the audio from the Liverpool one? Yeah. Like, how bad that was? And they were literally just like, yeah, it's the wrong decision, but we've got to protect we mate. That's yeah. literally what they said. Yeah. And then as a result, started giving Liverpool more favourable decisions. Yeah. And it just feels like it's going to be that entirely until somebody just goes, we need to have a chat with you lot. Like, it's not the robots, yeah. it's, it's you guys. The, the most upsetting part about it is, well, I mean, was it Sheffield United, the Isaac goal the other week? Obviously, he saw it in his own half. Where we were sitting, we couldn't see that he sort of the running his own half, so we we just didn't celebrate because like he's a fucking country mile offside. Yeah, but it's in any other game you would have celebrated. It's yeah. the fact that like you're yeah. waiting for that fucking screen to come up, you're waiting for the pending decision. Yeah, and you sat there, and then by the time it happens, it's like fucking, the moment's gone. Unless it's like the ninety fourth minute, and that you, you've got that suspense, and you're like, this is going to get with three points. Other than that, it's just shit. The, the, the one that always sticks in my mind, I think it was correct, so this is where it does work, but I still just remember the moment. Was it the semi-final of the Champions League, uh, Tottenham, Man City years ago, where this, where Man City scored in the last minute, like win it, and they were all running down the touch, like was it Aguero? Where, or was Aguero offside? Do you remember? It was the year Tottenham and Liverpool got the Champions League final. I'm really nervous here that everyone's shaking their head. I've had a dream. I think this. you're correct. I just don't think I can yeah, remember. It was, it was the year Liverpool beat Tottenham 2 0 in the Champions League final, and it was. Tottenham versus uh, Tottenham versus Man City in the semi final, and Man City scored that winner in the last kick of the game, and everyone's running like pens oh. running down the touchline. Oh and all. yes, I do remember. And then it, yeah. they went back. Thank God it wasn't a dream. Honestly, yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> I do remember. Sorry, man. sorry. Man. But like, it was the right decision. But even that, I'm like, obviously, it's taken away that moment. Yeah. For the right reason, so it's like so hard, isn't it? Because obviously, you, you want to be that person who's like, "Well, we could have been screwed over, and now we're not." But then, like now, you, you every big goal, like you're saying, you're not even celebrating them properly, are no. you? Nothing seemed like the, the Euros, like well, the other year when Saka got pulled off Chirini, and he got that yellow card. Yeah, and it's like, well, surely if he's through on goal, he's the last man. He's been pulled back that way. It's a straight red. Mm-hmm. Didn't work for yeah. that. I think there's there's, there's still. People, like I said, there's still people in that, in that office that's got to make the decisions, and I think they're t- too scared to fucking make them half the time. I, 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 yeah, that's, I think that's a genuine yeah, crap with yeah. that. Just too fucking scared to make the decisions. I've seen yeah. quite a few people saying this recently. It's what everyone said is go do it in a different sport. Somebody will know better than me. But like, but you're allowed like three a game. Cricket. I'd, I'd find Cricket that fun because yeah. then it was like again, I'm just this is just from a pure mm. like enjoyable point of view, like. The end, from an entertainment value if that goal goes in in the last minute you can still celebrate like normal because you're not they're not looking at every single bit it's whether that other team still has one to, have you got a yeah. challenge left I, yeah. I, I'd love that I mean again <laughs> thing is though you say that the games change I, I say this all the time I'm like do you remember like 10 years ago or whatever it was like jump was, for goalposts <laughs> well no but it was like the exact same rules for football as it was when you were growing up and then over the last few years it just seems like Pandora's box has been opened and now every single rule is getting changed like goal kicks now don't have to leave the box you kick off it doesn't have to go forward four goes back like all these little things are now getting changed yeah I think they're bringing in like sin bins and blue cards and stuff like that I've had two two, I've had two for about at least 20 years right you can take two players off and bring on a horse (laughs) (laughs) second real change that I would implement Purple octagon season ban doesn't ha- doesn't matter if it happens on the first game of the season or the last game of the season, but some horrendous two footed challenge just bang season ban. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> two players. He's bringing a horse on Jeff. <laughs> we pretty much got one of them for uh, Sandra and Ollie this season. <laughs> but let's go. Let's go. Like to, to, before we wrap up, before we come for some Euro like bit, bit of predictions from you. Let's go reasons for hope. So. What are the reasons for hope as a Middlesbrough fan this season? What things could happen over the summer? And why do you just think things will be better next year than they were this? Well, last year, all our best players left in the Akpom went to Ajax. Obviously, Archer, Ramsey, Giles, uh, Stefan were all on loan. So this year, we're ending the season with pretty much 
all the players who are starting are our players. So if we don't sell anyone, like, and, and I think, did we end the season top of the form guide as well? Go on, I, I said that last time and someone was like, oh, we'll have your trophy for that. Yeah. But, <laughs> but my point is, stats or stats, mate, yeah, it's fine. There's a bit of optimism for that. So I think if we avoid, and I'm not even joking, I've, I read somewhere that uh, our chairman had said that someone we've looked in at like the training pitch and things like that as well. So genuinely, if we're not getting the injuries we've had this year and we're not trying to build a squad from scratch again, I think that'd be good. Plus, the three teams who came down are the three ones that went up, wasn't it? It's Luton, Burnley and Sheffield United. Yeah, yeah. And then the three teams that have gone up, two of them are going to be, well, when this podcast, I don't know when the playoff final is, but when this podcast yeah. goes out, obviously Leicester have gone up and one of Southampton or Leeds will go up. Yeah. Mint for football fans that Ipswich have gone up from a Middlesbrough point of view. I wish it was Leeds, Southampton and Leicester that had gone back up because yeah. then... It's it's a it's a weaker championship than it was this year, essentially. So yeah, I, I fancy us this year. Nice reasons for hope. Reasons for hope as a Toon fan. Uh, I just think it's a marvelous time to be from the northeast. Generally, I think all the money coming in, painting the time bridge, school kids who couldn't access food, getting fed, stuff like that. I think it's a really really exciting time. If we'd finished, we finished once in the top half under Ashley. We finished what was it fifth. Uh, sixth in when, when under Pardew was under it? Under Pardew yeah. with that Hatton Ben Arthur, Papi yeah. Cisse, Denver Bar front three. We've just finished two back to back seasons here and we're going to Europe again. Um, and that's going to be some fun away days, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? A big night out in Azerbaijan. Like, like, how are let, let's go. <laughs> Galatasaray. Like, loads of them are actually in war zones, which I find <laughs> interesting. Like, how we're going to deal with Maccabi Tel Aviv or just, like, you know, anti match and Just Russian send your in and out, you'll sort <laughs> everybody you've made. Big Joel's got it under control. Just put him in a vest, he'll be all right. Um, Reykjavik. Um, but I think it's just a very exciting time to be a mag. I think it's a matter of time before we pick up a trophy. I think it's going to be Europe every season season from now is there a player that you think is a likely signing that could happen like let's leave Mbappe do you know what I mean to one side is there a likely signing that is exciting is, is there a, like they call them marquee signings do you know what I mean is there someone that would just get every single Toon fan buzzing the lips clean off for me it'd be Chaser but I don't think there's a, a marquee sign. I think for me where our success has lay has been getting players that if you're in the know and you're like analyze XG and you, you don't have a life and you're like statistically proper into it it's these players that, that when you go like oh we're signing Isaac or we're signing Bruno well, they'll know Gordon, but I'll be like I don't even know yeah, too even, much about these even people even Anthony Gordon like you mentioned before it wasn't like every single Toon fan was just like this is going to change our yeah, side do you know what I mean exactly was- that so it's going in for those players that we don't really they're not marquee signings. They're yeah. not somebody who's got you licking your lips because you've never really heard of them. Do you know what I mean? I think was Bruno signed from Brazil itself? Uh, no, no, Leon. No, he went to Leon, didn't he? Leon, yeah, yeah, but like, I don't think anyone really expected to be as good as he was. Not Same me. with Sven Botman. So I just think a lot of these players are sort of who we need to go for. But I think we should raid Palace personally. Alise and Eze, I think yeah. they'll be phenomenal you need, you need to get the striker just for the song that, that they play when he scores. What's he called? The one who scored the hat-rick yesterday. The Palace striker who scored this hat trick. Oh, Mateta. Yeah, have you not seen uh, it? The, the oh, the uh, Venger Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you not seen it? Really, every week he scores, they're just like, uh, he scored against Newcastle, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. There's, there's a video, one of the Newcastle fans, what was the score? Did the beat you? It was like 2-0, 3-0. And he, yeah. he scored two maybe. And yeah. They're playing that and it's in the Newcastle end, they're recording the Palace songs and the fume and they go, fuck off with your shit song. <laughs> but they play, they play Venger boys every time he scores. Fuck Brilliant. Yeah, no. uh, give us your thoughts then. We're going to do an episode uh, with the Irish guy who's been on before yeah. we're going to try and get it out just before the Euros and do a bit of a preview and raid his mind for all kind of knowledge and have our little bit of chat about it but we've got a few weeks to go now before the first game about two or three weeks what's your what's your kind of thoughts we're talking a bit before we started recording as an England fan what are you thinking it'll be a fun summer they always are do you know what I mean Euros World Cup and what with this one being so close to home in Germany I've got loads of friends going out and it's a shame I can't go out this year um I think it'll just be much much of a muchness, as I always do with England. I think we'll get to maybe the quarters, maybe the semis, and then we'll crash out. I don't think we have that. And I think it's the same for Newcastle right now when it comes to crunch time, when it comes to getting over the line. I just don't think we have that winning mentality yet. Meb's the tournament after. That's fingers crossed then. Right, well, thank you very much, mate. <laughs> Appreciate you coming on. Uh, and give us a shout into that uh, camera there. 
where they can people can catch it as far as gigs, as far as like more information about your stand up, more information about the podcast. And you mentioned another one. My website's the first port of call www.raulcurley.com after the Edinburgh Fringe with my solo show, Raul Britannia, Cabaret Voltaire, just the tonic room. Um, my gig listens often on my website, but if you follow me on Instagram at Raul Coley Comic, R A U L K O H L I C O M I C, you can find all my gig listings and there's regular clips being uploaded. And I tend to share where I am and which part of the world I'm in and where I'm gigging. Nice one. Cheers, Legend. mate. Bye. Yes, Woo!